Hello everyone and welcome to the Ram Show. I am your host, Anthony Banford, coming to you not from the Steve Bonnets TV studio, but rather my house. We've got a great show planned for you with top 10 lists, sports, business, food, an interview with Mr. Culp. The major twos have been working hard. Let's check it out. Hello everyone, I'm Lauren Black, here with your RCTV Top 10 News of the Week. Last week, Hurricane Sally hit Florida and Alabama, causing 500,000 homes to be without power. Have you noticed a change in temperature? That's not just your typical fall weather in Pennsylvania. California wildfires have spread to the East Coast, causing a dramatic drop in temperature, some temperatures reaching in the low 40s this week. After 13 years of keeping up with the Kardashian, the Jenners and the Kardashians have announced that the show will be ending in January 2021, with season 19 being their last season. Travis Scott and McDonald's teamed up to make the Travis Scott meal. The $6 collab meal, which features a quarter pounder with cheese, bacon and lettuce, a medium order of fries with barbecue sauce, and a Sprite, is scheduled to be available through October 4th. It's been announced that Harry Styles will be replacing Shia LaBeouf in Don't Worry Darling, a film set to be released in Christmas 2020. This will be Harry Styles' first film since 2017 smash hit Dunkirk. Famous TikToker Charlie D'Amelio has teamed up with Dunkin' Donuts to release her new drink called The Charlie. The drink is Dunkin' Cold Brew with whole milk and three pumps of caramel swirl. For the first time in seven years, Taylor Swift returned to the Country Music Awards performing her new song Betty from Folklore. The ex-country star returned to her home stage after moving in a pop direction after her release of Red in 2012. McDonald's came out with spicy nuggets that add a kick to their classic menu item, Chicken McNugget. Warren Buffett sold a lot of his single stocks, many including airline stocks. He is now heavily invested in gold and this has shocked a lot of investors. Sadly, the start of the Eagles season did not turn out well. They lost the Washington football team 27-17 after blowing a lead in the second half. That's all for your RCTV Top 10 News. I'm Lauren Black. Thanks for tuning in. What's going on, Springford? And welcome to my in-home Springford Sports Studio. No, it's not as glamorous as what you might typically see, but the same thing goes for the NFL. The NFL is back, but it just might not be as glamorous as what we are typically seeing. Let's talk about some restrictions we might see here in the odd 2020 season our first big restriction we'll see for the nfl players is that they have to get tested every but in between 24 hours of game day so if a player tested positive you could see an entire game get delayed if not if that's it we could see entire weeks get delayed let's hope we never get to that point but it's definitely possible if we have multiple players on multiple teams testing positive we could see weeks of the NFL season get delayed. That is worst case scenario. On the sideline, coaches, medical staff, everybody on the sideline has to wear some sort of face covering. Whether it's a mask or a visor, everybody has to wear a face covering to protect themselves and each other from the coronavirus. Now, let's talk about fan, fan limitations. Some people might be a little surprised to hear that some NFL fans Teams are allowing fans into their stadium. It's actually not up to the NFL commissioner. The NFL commissioner said it's up to the owners to decide whether they want fans in their stadium or not. So, for example, a team like the Cowboys with Jerry Jones as their owner, he said he wants to allow 20% capacity starting week one. And so the Cowboys are allowing fans in their stadium while a team like the Philadelphia Eagles, they say, we don't want fans until further notice. So it's likely not going to be all season, no fans at the Philadelphia Eagles stadium. While a team like the Arizona Cardinals, who are in the middle ground, they say, hey, look, we're not going to make a decision yet. We're, we're going to wait two weeks and maybe after two weeks, we're going to allow fans in our stadium. Now, a team like the Philadelphia Eagles, there was a report that they've already lost four billion dollars so these teams are definitely struggling so this is definitely going to be a different type of nfl season but either way football is back we're all excited about it i'm excited about it so i can't complain thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you all stay healthy and safe have a good one from nationwide to district wide let's catch up with some of the fall sports that have resumed play
Hi, my name is Hope Flanagan. I'm a senior and I'm a midfielder on the girls' soccer team. We have a really good team this year, so we're expecting to win packs and then make a run in the district and state tournament. Since we play for each other and have really good team chemistry, we're hoping that that helps us win a lot of games and go far this season. I was nominated for the preseason high school All-American soccer team, so I'm hoping I have a good showing this season and we'll make the actual team at the end of the year. We have really good coaches and a very strong team this year, so we're excited to see how far we can go. The Springford boys varsity soccer team is coming off a strong season that ended with a heartbreaking finish, losing to Abington 3-2 in the opening round of districts. The boys return an inexperienced roster, but one that has a lot of excitement for the coming season. We caught up with senior midfielder Nick Denena to discuss how COVID has affected his team, how they feel about their upcoming schedule, and the expectations and goals for the coming year. Well, obviously with the late start, it's been affecting all the boys, but we've been training in the off season and um... Every practice we do have to wear a mask on and off the field and get temperature checks to make sure no one's being put at risk right now. The Rams have been training all summer, whether at home or the newly built weight room, just trying to stay ready for whatever their season will hold. We have a lot of boys that came into camp and really improved this year. Um, we got a lot to prove this year and I think we have a good chance of doing really well. The Rams will play a quick 12-game schedule within the Pioneer Athletic Conference, which is full of interesting rivalries something Denena is really looking forward to. It's going to be very physically challenging, but we got a tight-knit group of guys who have been together for a while, and our chemistry is looking really good, so we all have the same goal, just to win the pack. The boys kick off their season Saturday, September 26th at 3 o'clock at Perkium and Valley High School. It's sure to be a fun and exciting season, something that is definitely worth following. I'm Matt Dunn with The Ram Show. So coming into the year, we knew we had to make a plan um, to keep everybody safe. So for this year, we had to come up with a return to action plan. Um, and my main priority as a coach is always to keep my athletes safe. So one of the things we had to do is find a way to make it so that our athletes could run safely while being separate from each other so that they weren't um, potentially spreading um, the virus. So one of the things that we did this year is I split my team into two groups. We have a training group and a competition group just to kind of limit the numbers and exposures of those groups. Um, we made it so that as soon as the kids checked in, they were able to go off and start warming up on their own instead of waiting for the whole group to do that. Um, we had strict mask protocols and making sure that the athletes wore their masks to practice and away from practice at any time they weren't doing anything athletic, they had their masks on. Um, we had a walkie on all times that we were able to report anything that was going on. We had a strict check-in list, um, doing temperature readings, um, and then making sure the students were answering all their questions so we knew if we had to change anything. Um, the other big change to this year was just the practice times. We split the teams up. The girls came at one time and the boys came at another time. Um, again, just to make sure we were social distance as much as possible. Um, and then in terms of coming up with a meet plan, that has definitely changed. We used to put all of our boys, 60 runners in a race, and now we're limited down to about 12. Again, just for the sheer safety of the athletes to make sure everybody can compete well. Um, it's definitely a different year than any other year. Um, but again, the main purpose is to make sure everybody's able to compete, have a good time, um, and able to do something. Um, and I'm glad to say at Springport we were able to make that happen. It's certainly not what we're used to, but at its core, it's still running. We have been training hard all summer long. And we're ready to race. Now that we've seen what the sports teams are up to, let's head to the food and business segment of the Ram Show. Hi, I'm Katie O'Callaghan reporting here on RCTV on small businesses near us that you can support. Today I'm here at Java's Bruin, a small cafe here at the Court of Limerick. So let's go inside, grab a mask, and talk to Bob, one of the owners of the company. We've been here uh, since May of 2007. Uh, so it's been 13 years. We started it, yes. I started it with my wife, my daughters, Julie and Amanda. Just looking for a change, wanted to become part of a community and, you know, work something as a family. Favorite part is the customers. Uh, we have such great customers, they're loyal, 
Um, it's just great seeing them all the time. It's a family-oriented place. The, the hardest thing about COVID is not getting the hugs, not seeing the smiles, not getting the handshakes from our constant flow of customers. That's been the hardest part. COVID, we never really closed. Uh, we went straight to doing all curbside. Um, inside, we've got our mask on, we sanitize all the time. When we went to the green phase, we're actually allowed 25% inside. We chose not to let people inside, just for safety precautions. Uh, we're a small shop, it's hard to have people roaming around touching things. So we're doing everything over the phone. Uh, we have outdoor seating where they will tend to sit outside and then phone it in. Uh, if someone forgets their phone and they have a mask, we can let them in one at a time to place an order. But 90% is probably over the phone. Yeah. My favorite thing on the menu, uh, it's normally the biscotti. I like the anise biscotti. Muffin-wise, uh, pumpkin chocolate chip or cappuccino raspberry chocolate chip. Okay. Food-wise, it's the Italian pork wrap or the Italiano. Most popular order, it varies with the seasons. Right now, anything with pumpkin. So the pumpkin chocolate chip muffins, the pumpkin walnut, the pumpkin cinnamon crumb, and uh, we'll be starting to make uh, pumpkin biscotti. They're the most popular items right now. Being a small business means you really value not only your customers, but the other small businesses in the area. And you try to support each other. Uh, as a small business, we try to buy local. So I go to Jim and Ralph's for my produce. I go to Collegeville Bakery for my bread. Uh, it's just trying to support each other. Our main supplier is Altieri's out of Norristown. So that's what it's like being a small business. So debt to our employees. Uh, they're the backbone of the company. Uh, they, they're been here for years, they're loyal, cheerful, and they put up with all the problems we have with COVID. They've been great. Java's Brewing is not just a job, it's not just a coffee house, but it is a sense of community and family. Now let's go talk to Riley Sullivan, an employee here at Java's Brewing, and see how much she loves her job. Hi, so I'm Riley Sullivan. I am a senior at Spring Forward and I work at Java's Brewing. I absolutely love working there. Uh, it is just such an amazing experience. Like my coworkers and my bosses are just like a second family to me. Um, I love them all so much and uh, they constantly go out of their way to support me, not just at work, but in other parts of my life. And they just really, they don't have to do that, but they do. And I think that's what sets them apart from a lot of other businesses because they do what other people don't have to. They just do it because they want to and they want you to feel special and welcomed. So when you come to Java's Bruin, you're not just gonna walk in, buy something and leave. It's, it's a really personal experience and they really wanna get to know you and understand you so they can better serve you as a customer, but also be your friend. And I think that's really like special. Um, with the pandemic and everything, they've handled it all so incredibly gracefully and their standard of what they're putting out hasn't dropped or changed at all. And they're really putting in an effort behind the scenes that I see firsthand to make sure that everybody gets the best version of what they're paying for. And I think that's so, that's just great. I just love them. And I think that you'll love them as much as I do. You should definitely go there. I'm drinking a green giant from there right now. It's almost gone. So as you can tell, it was very good. Um, yeah, go to Java's Bruin. You are getting so much more than what you pay for when you go there. Thank you so much, Java Bruin, for letting us inside your coffee house. Hi, I'm Brim Brazillo and welcome back to the entertainment portion of the Ram Show. As many of you know, the coronavirus has affected the economy in many ways, film being one of them. After a five month hiatus, we are starting to see films return to the production set, however this is not without limitations. Despite social distancing efforts between actors, many producers and directors are finding it difficult to film real world, crowd, and romance scenes without violating CDC protocol. However, production is not the only part of the film industry being affected. Without movie theaters being open at full capacity, many production companies are losing money on the sales of films that were supposed to be released in 2020. How are they handling this? 
While many companies are choosing to release movies later in 2020, such as Black Widow and the new James Bond movie, other companies are choosing to release their movies as late as 2021. Some of these movies include The Minion Sequel, A Quiet Place 2, and Godzilla vs. Kong. For the sake of entertainment, we hope that these movies will be released sooner rather than later. That's all for now, thanks for watching, and see you next week. Hi, I'm Hannah Sadikov, and over the next couple weeks, I'm going to show you some of my favorite things to do when you have nothing to do. Today, we're here in my kitchen, and I'm going to show you how to make my favorite snack, brownies. My personal favorite brownie mix to use is Betty Crocker's fudge brownies. You can use any kind of brownies or any kind of snack you want, but these are my personal favorite. For today's snack, we're going to need some brownie mix, of course, some Pam, a pan, a big mixing bowl, an egg, some measuring spoons, and some oil. I found the candy, it's such a pretty sight. It makes the food taste dandy, but my tummy hurts all night. I'll put in some ingredients, but keep the rest for me. I'm not just disobedient, I'm careful, can't you see? It's a piece of cake and bake a pretty cake. let them cool, and then you can enjoy your brownies. I'll see you next time on things you can do when you have nothing to do. Welcome to the show. My name is Kyle Campo. Today we have a legendary local hero. Let's bring him out. So, Mr. Cole, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. That's good. Love the set. Thank you. So, how are you adjusting to the online school environment? Um, I think, you know, just like anything else as a teacher, you just gotta, you gotta go with the flow and, uh, it's, it's not the ideal situation, but, you know, I think I'm adjusting well and trying to basically do the same things that I would do in the class. All right, I don't care. <laughs> How do you explain this? How do I explain that? Well, uh, you know, my, uh, my lady likes wrestlers, so I thought, you know, <laughs> why not take some fun pictures of being a wrestler? I mean, it looks, it, that look like, that looks authentic, doesn't it? Looks pretty good to me. Looks like an old man in a middle school wrestler outfit. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> but it still looks pretty good. Better than most middle schoolers. You could take most middle schoolers. So how are you enjoying not dealing with children every day? Uh, well, I still deal with children every day. I got some in the house. I got my son and things like that. Unfortunately. I'm, I'm an inner child. That's true. So, yeah, pretty much. You know, still dealing with it. Even though it's on the, on the online, on the computer. Still have to deal with the same situation, sort of. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time. Well, thank you. And thank you for watching. Thanks for stopping by to watch this episode of The Ram Show. We hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time.